Hi, well I'm Stephen Ashaba and I want to help you out a little bit with calculating the uh, work associated with moving some molecules up gradient uh, 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 in terms of concentration. In other words, uh, the work against uh, a concentration gradient. So the physical situation here is, uh, I just imagine I've got a box, it's got a bunch of molecules, say solute molecules, and uh, there's low concentration here, high concentration here, and um, I'm, the way we're going to do this is to calculate the Gibbs energy change associated with taking those uh, molecules and kind of uh, um, compressing a given number of molecules into a smaller and smaller space until we get up uh, to that, that new concentration. So I've just imagined that I've got a certain number of molecules there at C1, and the very first step is going to be taking those molecules, putting them into a smaller space. Now, um, because I know that the Gibbs energy is H minus Ts, and I'm saying that this is an isothermal process, and uh, we're also going to say that um, that that the end is an ideal solution. And what that means is that the change in Gibbs energy and going from here to here, uh, it would include a, a change in the enthalpy, but because uh, it's ideal solutions, we're going to say that that goes away. And uh, because it was an isothermal process, I just factor out that T. So I have the change in Gibbs energy in that little step is equal to minus the temperature times the change in the entropy. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is going to use the differential equation of state for a change in entropy. And I've uh, written it here, um, as, w as we know it, that's a CD over T times a change in temperature. But of course, that's going to go away because it's isothermal. Second term in that differential equation of state should be alpha over kappa times dV over V. But uh, we're assuming ideal solutes, and uh, um, it, we're sort of using the analogy of an ideal gas. So that would be um, alpha over kappa just became nR over V, so I've written it that way. Now, um, another step in here is that since um, we're going to, we're sort of uh, thinking about these as solutes, so it's kind of more uh, conven uh, convenient to think of that in terms of, of concentrations. So if I have a concentration here and it changes a little bit uh, there, turns out uh, since the concentration is just moles per volume, then the change, the relative change in volume dV over V turns out to be equal to the negative of the relative change in concentrations. That is to say, since volume here is getting smaller, the concentrations will, will, will get bigger in a relative sense. So if we put that all together, dg is uh, uh, that was uh, uh, that was taken away because it was an ideal solute that just leaves minus t that's that times the change in entropy uh, which turned into that quantity there uh, times nr so that's that's uh, that part there so I have the change in Gibbs energy now and going from that tiny uh, little step and uh, the minuses cancel out there, and so I have nRT up the top and uh, concentration uh, at the bottom. So if I want to calculate the change in Gibbs energy resulting from that tiny little concentration uh, going in that first step, I just take nRT divided by that concentration, multiply it by the change in concentration. And of course, um, if we do that many steps, then uh, uh, if I want to calculate the accumulated change in the Gibbs energy, I just have to, uh, you know, I'm going to integrate that. And uh, nRT will come out. I have the dG integrates out to a delta G, that is to say from here to here. Um, and uh, the uh, 1 over C dC integrates out to a log. So we end up with nRT log C2 over C1. So that's quite important there. The change in Gibbs energy just depends on nRT times the ratio of uh, the, the log of the ratio of the concentrations. Um, one more note here. We've established previously that as long as that um, sequence of concentrations takes place reversibly and isothermally and isobarically, then uh, we can say that um, that change in the Gibbs energy is the work that you would have to do in order to effect that, that concentrating um, process. So I've just said that that's equal to W prime, the non-PV work. 
So this is basically our answer. If I want to get the work done by uh, associated with, let's say, moving a molecule from this concentration to that concentration, I just say it's nRT times the log of C2 over C1, and that's the, that's the work that's done. Thanks.